Holy Week Meditation for Friday, April 10, 2020. Our scripture lesson is taken from the book of Matthew, the 27th chapter, verses 32 to 44. The Crucifixion of Jesus. As they were going out, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon, and they forced him to carry the cross. They came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. There they offered Jesus wine to drink, mixed with gall. But after tasting it, he refused to drink it. When they had crucified him, they divided up his clothes by casting lots. And sitting down, they kept watch over him there. Above his head, they placed the writing charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two rebels were crucified with him, one on his right, and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, You who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. Come down from the cross if you are the Son of God. In the same way, the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders mocked him. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. He's the king of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. In the same way, the rebels who were crucified with him also heaped insults on him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Psychologist Ruth Berenda and her associates carried out an interesting experiment with teenagers designed to show how a person handled group pressure. The plan was quite simple. They brought groups of 10 adolescents into a room for a test. Subsequently, each group of 10 was instructed to raise their hand when the teacher pointed to the longest line on three separate charts. Now, what one person in the group did not know was that nine of the others in the room had been instructed ahead of time to vote not for the longest line, but for the second longest line. So the experiment began with nine teenagers voting for the wrong line. The one student who was not in on this plot would typically glance around and he'd frown in confusion and he'd slip his hand up with the rest of the group. The instructions were repeated and the next card was raised. Time after time, the self-conscious student would sit there saying a short line is longer than a long line, simply because he lacked the courage to challenge the group. This remarkable conformity occurred in about 75% of the cases and was true of small children and high school students as well. It takes courage to stand apart from the crowd and to do the right thing. It's human nature to want to be accepted. In our scripture, Jesus travels the road to Golgotha bearing his heavy cross. Insults are hurled at him from Roman soldiers to citizens alike. It always seems to be easier to kick someone when they're down, to go with the crowd rather than to stand apart. But this brings up two important questions for our day. First, how do we survive to bear the cross that we're now carrying? And second, how do we avoid giving in to crowd mentality? It's also easy these days to find ourselves not just in quarantine, but in isolation from our daily routine. It becomes too easy to lose hope, to let boredom find its way into our psyche. Sometimes we can find ourselves feeling alone in a crowded world we simply cannot touch. We need to start by understanding that we are all carrying the same cross. 
We need to fill our hearts and our minds with the love of God so that there is no room for fear, no room for resentment of others. This is a lesson all of us need to put into practice. Perhaps it's best said by David Masters, you are an amazing person with a unique purpose, message, passion, and mission for your life. Your experience has powerfully equipped you to help others who may be struggling with the same issues as you have to deal with. You don't have to have all the answers. What you do need to do is not give up, but get up. Take what control you can and carve out a new life for you, a better life, possibly your best life, and make the world a better place. Let us pray. Oh God, we pray for our families that they may be steadfast and wise, giving comfort when needed, seeking comfort in our own time of need, fulfilling the commitments we have made and respecting healthy boundaries and limits with one another. We pray for your family across the earth, God, for the lonely and isolated, longing for words of welcome, for the grieving and the ill who struggle for healing. Hold them in your outstretched arms, Lord, when we're unable to do so. Walk with us, O God, so that we can be mindful to be close to one another in our hearts, minds, and spirit. We ask these things in the love that endures all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.